Elon always felt emotional all the time. You know, you could see, uh, you know, or I ran into him at a party once and I go, how's it going? He goes, I'm really lonely. And I was like, oh, okay. TMI. Nine but okay. children. Yeah, I know. I was like, oh, I, I didn't know what to say. I was like, oh, well, okay. All right, then I'll get a drink over here. I don't, what did you say? That was, it was <laughs> Maybe so Maybe if you like, had hugged him. Maybe if you'd hugged him in that oh, moment, no, we wouldn't be no, here right you. now, Kara. No, thank you. Hello and welcome to the Bulwark Podcast. I'm delighted to be here with Kara Swisher, host of the On with Kara Swisher podcast, co-host of the Pivot Podcast, which is always right around the Bulwark Podcast on the Apple charts. Mm -hmm. Not that I obsess over those. <laughs> and Do you? She's, I haven't looked. And she's the author of three books, including the brand new memoir, Burn Book. Thanks for doing this, Kara. Thank you for having me. Um, so if you don't mind, I want to start, like, as I was reading the book, I, I became obsessed with one question that's kind of not really a, a topic of the book, but it's, it's okay. adjacent. So if okay. you don't mind, can we do one no, big picture not at question? All. It's your podcast, sure. Let's do it. So, uh, uh, you know, because you started this, what, in the 90s? In the 90s, you started reporting 90s, early 90s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was thinking about this as I was reading through, and I was like, going back through the 90s into the mid-aughts, maybe even late-aughts. If you mm -hmm. ask people if they thought the technological advances to date were like good or bad for society, basically everybody would have said good. There are always some Luddites, but basically everybody would have mm -hmm. said positive. Today, yeah. if I raise that question with my peers, there's a lot of uncertainty. And so I wonder yeah. where you fall on that spectrum sitting at now, 2024. <laughs> is it a, has it been a net positive, this transformation well, you've covered or, or net negative? It's interesting. I don't think you could even net it out, right? Like, would you think, I think one of the key quotes in the book is the Paul Virilio quote, which is when you invent the ship, you invent the shipwreck. When you invent electricity, you invent electrocution. Yeah. And I think that is, you know, is electricity a net positive? Are cars a net positive? Yes, um, well, I would say, yeah. We, it is, but maybe not if if we if the planet burns up, right? You know, you can. Sure. You don't. You, there's there. You know, we don't know what we don't know in the future and how where things are going to go come out, and we never will because things change over time. I would say it's a net positive over, over and has the potential to be a real net positive, but I would say the negatives have far outweighed the positives in some critical areas like democracy, right? And and the things, the, the the deleterious effects of wealth, the deleterious effects of partisanship have been boosted and amplified by social media and and these and these technologies. And it's given some very bad people an ability to be very bad at scale. And so that's that's been super problematic for for any kind of comedy. And it doesn't have to pull us apart, but that's what these tools have been used for for the most part. Yeah. I mean, I wonder if that's true, though, that it doesn't have to. And I guess my challenge to the question is I think about the phones, right? Because in, in the book, um, I, I admitted to you in the green room, I, I hopped around. It's mm -hmm. it's good. It's long. But, I, you know, I'm trying to get through everything. But I, I hopped around and I hopped to the Apple chapter or the various parts where you talk about Apple. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Cook and uh, Jobs are on balance. I mean, you paint three-dimensional pictures, but on balance, you know, more towards the white hat side of things. But I would agree. I, I just, what, go ahead. I would agree with you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. And so on the, but I, you know, I really think about this question and it kind of comes down to a lot of the um, negatives that have happened have been downstream of the hardware phone question, right? Well, I and mean, if yeah. you think about the loneliness, sure. the teen suicide, the, the democracy, the polarization, right? The fact mm -hmm. that we're getting all of this right now in our handheld device. And I just, I do wonder you th if they would look, if you look back on that with a little bit of man, I don't know if we're if this is a if this is a we nicotine, shouldn't have this the is a devices. cigarette situation. It's not the it's not I'm I'm not doing a you know guns don't kill people people kill people thing here, <laughs> but in this case, you know it, it's just a phone. It can be used for a lot of things. It's a tool. Yeah. You know, there's that Brad Smith at Microsoft has this. I had a book which I thought was very smart, and he I think it was uh, tools and weapons. It's either a weapon or a tool. Every single nuclear power tool, yes, for sure, and a very promising one. Weapon, absolutely. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. And I think it's just how you use these things. In this case, the, 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 a screen, a TV screen, is that um, is that a tool? Is that a weapon? Because it's used to broadcast propaganda by Donald Trump. Yes, but it really is the propaganda, right? Really right. is what he's saying. And he would find any media. I mean, look, I, I always joke, I, I don't joke about this, but I say, you know, Hitler didn't need Instagram, did he? He had lots of other <laughs> tools, but if he had it, 
very powerful piece of technology for them. And so I tend not to blame the, 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 the items themselves, even the software itself. What I do blame is when they, for example, Facebook, when they would put um, stuff, when they allowed lots of people to come in some of these chat groups, it created it, it, the way they did it, they didn't limit it. So rage could move very fast. I do blame certain social networks for, um, uh, pushing more virality over context and accuracy. I blame them for doing it at speed. I blame them for not putting safety measures in place. That's once it's deployed, how they manage it is more, is more what I worry about. And so, um, I don't, I don't, I think it's very hard to blame the device itself, except if it's built in a way that is addictive, which I think some of these things are, some of the software is, or it's built in a way so you can't put it down. That's it. That's, that's it. It's like cigarettes. It's addiction. Yeah. I basically agree with that. It's just, I've been struck like lately. I feel like you, you see on, uh, so I'm addicted. So I'm on the addict mm-hmm. list. So I'm just trying to work I, through I it. But, you know, I can see that. I from your activity. <laughs> but, 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 it's not, I don't hide it. I don't hide my addiction mm-hmm. at all. Um, and so, you know, but when I'm on, on X and I, I'm, mm-hmm. you see somebody will put up a viral chart and they'll be like, oh my goodness, loneliness like look at how much it's it's dropped over you know over happiness look how much it's dropped or polarization mm-hmm. look how much it's up it always feels like it's like 2011 2013 like that chart mm-hmm. starts to go up or down and it's yes. like what it, what was that and it's like well it's when it was, it's, it was about the time when everybody had phones media. and social media in their hands right yeah it wasn't phones as much it was the social media on top of it and the addictive nature you know yeah I the don't smartphone know element right not like the yes, phone. yeah, yeah yes, the social media yeah. on your um, phone i guess you the don't like run off with your yeah, exactly. And, but it's a combination of all of them. Tristan Harris is, 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 a, is become an advocate against this stuff, you know, against yeah. the way tech is used. He worked for Google. And one of the things, you know, he is absolutely right about is this stuff crawls down your brainstem, right? It, it, it appeals to human nature. There's lots of parts of human nature of wanting to coalesce and be with people. And then there's a part of human nature that wants to be by themselves, you know, uh, you know, sniffing the whatever, right? And, and with your, with your addictive, whatever it happens to be yeah. in many cases is a phone. These things are built for addiction. They're, they're built for addiction. So they will, and, and they don't have to be right. You can, you can turn, for example, if you hit the side of an iPhone three times, it becomes black and white and it becomes less interesting to people from on a, on a visceral level. And you don't touch it as much if it's black and white. I know it sounds dumb, but it, it really does work. And, and they could do a lot of things that don't make you descend into addiction. They could put like an Uber app. Are you spending a lot of time on your Uber app? No, you call it, you use it, it goes. That should yeah. be on the front page. Facebook should be deep in a folder. So it takes a minute to get to it, but they don't naturally do that. The other thing is when they design these things, they, it's very much like a casino where if you push this button, you want to push it, don't you? Push this button. And it goes way back to AOL days when I was covering it. It was here in Washington, D.C. Um, I was asking, there. Britney Spears was a big clicker. I mean, people would click on anything about Britney Spears yeah. back then. And one of the pictures was fuzzy of her on the front page of AOL. And I said, why is that fuzzy? Why is that picture fuzzy? And this guy who ran the, the front page said, well, we make it fuzzy so they click in. They're in they lean in, yeah, they, they click in. More. You know, it's the same thing as a casino. It's yeah. or, or whatever it is else you. Well, now and we so, literally have the casinos on our phone too. The sports. That's right. You, know, you do. So it's this, we, do both. we don't have to design it like that. It doesn't have to be designed so it appeals to addictive qualities. You couldn't, and that's I really that that is on tech companies to have done the way they design the software is designed to make you not be able to put it down. Um, so yeah, so you you described yourself in the books kind of as Cassandra about some of these threats. Um, mm-hmm. uh, there have been some critics that have said like, oh well, even, you know, even you were too chummy early on. You just kind of talk about that process. Where you're living amidst this. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Right, no, you, I'm going to push back on that. Tell us that it's, it's, I, I'm sorry to tell you, it's largely from men I competed with and beat. So uh, <laughs> fine. All right, we'll put it. We'll put it there. Um, when I started my career at the Washington Post and Wall Street Journal, I was a beat reporter. You know what that is. You can't go on these assholes, right? Like you cannot do that. This happened today at Facebook. This ha- I didn't cover Facebook as a beat reporter, but um, this happened today at Google. This happened today. You know, it was you're a news reporter. That's what you do. And you know, it's like when they they accuse people who cover Trump of that. I'm like, they're they're beat reporters. What do you want? You want them to go in with like a hammer at him? Like I'm not sure what we need that's to learn. The- we need to know. That's I, I'm always right. a Maggie Haberman I, I don't defender know what on this. Say. There needs to be Maggie I, I, Haberman's. I, I, and people that shout about how terrible what she reports is. 
she's not in the, she's just not, it's just, it's not true. It's just, but I see why they do it because they hate him. They want her to do something about it because right. she's near him. Fine. She's a beat reporter. I'm sorry, kids. That's what she does. She tells you what they're doing every now and then the times makes a mistake, but usually they do a pretty good job covering it in general. I know, I know they're mad at the age thing, but whatever. I don't, that's because they want to win. That's, that's different from anything else. Um, so one of the things, so I was a beat reporter. And then when I left to do that, to do all things D, we were very, t it, it, a lot of these things are written by people who were born years after we were covering this stuff. We did very heavy duty coverage and very critical coverage of Google trying to take over the search market. We did extensive coverage about sexual harassment in Silicon Valley around the Ellen Pow trial. We were one of the leading groups of people pushing on the disaster that was Uber, including it's, it's terrible CEO, Travis Kalanick. One of the things that this was in the times, this thing was, I was, I wasn't tough until 2020. Hey, why don't you look at the archives of the times in 2018, my very first column for them, I called them digital arms dealers. That's nice. Like, give me a break. I'm yeah. sorry. It's just not true. And so, you know, I'm chummy. I don't, I don't, I have to know them. I have to speak to them. And I think what it all centers around. You don't seem very chummy does. to me, by the way. Just I'm not. It's, I was like, <laughs> I would great. pick, you know, I would pick any 10 fortune covers back then over Kara Swisher. Like we were, we were known as mean. And what was really interesting in this phenomena is all these PR people that I cut, that I had to deal with back then was like, I don't know who the fuck you were talking to, but she terrified us and was really not very nice to us. Like not, not was tough on us. Um, and yet the PR people defending you, I guess, I don't know. Um, but one of the things that, that, um, uh, that, that, that drives me crazy about it is that we were among the first to call into question in the, through these interviews, Mark Zuckerberg and the anti-Semitic stuff, the stuff around 2010, I did an interview with Mark, um, in which Walt and I really drilled him on privacy and he, so much so that he started sweating and had to take off. That was, I he don't know what to I take can off his hoodie. Yeah, exactly. So in a lot of ways, I'm like, what do you want me to do? I, I have to speak to them. It centers around Elon. I literally say in the book, I had, I, I really loved what he was doing when he was doing space and cars. And he was a little bit of a narcissist. He was a little bit juvenile. I didn't see this coming. And for some reason, people are like, you, you didn't, we knew it was coming. I'm like, where, where did you write it was coming? Nobody did. Nobody saw this, sh this dramatic shift very few people, maybe one or two, in the in the industry uh, around him. Everybody loved this guy, and he was more interesting than everyone else because he was doing significant things around. Starlink was amazing. I'm sorry, it just is. And the fact if you say Starlink's amazing, everyone's like, "You love Elon." I'm like, I really don't. You can see I don't. Um, but Starlink was amazing. What he did was Tesla. It pushed forward electric vehicles. I'm sorry to tell you, but it was dead until he pushed it forward. It was. Um, same thing with space. He's innovated space. And this is a guy who attacks me regularly. And I, I still say, I'm sorry, but you have to be honest about his accomplishments, even though he's become one of the more dangerous figures in technology. And now he is. So what are we going to do about that now? So that's what, that drives me nuts. I'm sort of like, okay. Who do sure. you think one of my, really when I was asking around, what do I ask Kara? So you said that he said, mm -hmm. you said he was one of the most dangerous. Who, who is the most dangerous right now of he our, is. of our he overlords? Is. He is. Elon. He is. Yeah. He's got money and means to sue. He's been suing all kinds of, he just sued open AI today. Cause he's, you know, he's hurt that they kicked him out, I think, but he has some cockamamie reason for it. You know, he sued um, another Roberta Kaplan case, this uh, group that was pointing out the hate on, on, he's trying to quash their free speech is what he's doing. Um, you know, he's got his, his myths all over space and he can decide things that our government should be deciding. He's got his myths in Ukraine. He really is ill-equipped to do so. Um, I think, and he has, you know, he has, our space program depends on Elon Musk right now. Um, we so talk, that's we, not good. I interviewed Walter about this. I love Walter Isaacson. And his point is, is, is right, is like, this is a government problem. I, what, I, I heard your interview and we talked about it, your interview with him. And there were some very good critiques of his book. But he is right yeah. on this point about the Starlink thing. This is our fail, our government. Like, how do we get I in the agree. situation where this this that's crazy great. person is responsible I would, for this? I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. I think that's correct. It is our government's fault. But the fact of the matter is... Um, we should, that's a privatization that's been going on forever, right? The, yeah. the, the privatization of space, the private, our government has, which built the internet, by the way, paid for the internet, created, and then everybody else made money off of it, except our government. Um, 
you know, really has abrogated its responsibility in basic research in AI. AI now is being run by private companies. That's why Elon's suing. He wants to get in, right? He wants yeah. to get in on it. And he's doing his own thing. But right now, AI is dominated by uh, Microsoft. OpenAI Open is a smaller company, but um, is dominated by all the bigs again. And so this is a critical national security issue and everything else. And our government is sitting on its hands. So yeah. I want to, um, I want to get to the AI thing, but just a couple more things on Elon. Just really quick, the NBC, there's an NBC story yesterday. That's really good. That lists all of the various oversight things Elon's dealing with right now from the SEC to all, you know, all the yeah. various agencies and how, uh, you know, he is financially, I, I think he's also lost his mind, but he's financially motivated, incentivized sure. to try to help Trump this time because of yes, all the is. threats facing. Him. Yes, so, indeed. He is. Uh, I'm he curious is. your take on the psychology of this. He he did a tweet yesterday. I never went, I want never went to therapy on my gravestone. Um, we highly recommend therapy on this podcast. Um, I don't know yeah. if, uh, if you have any mutuals anymore. With I Elon, think it was. You I, know what therapy. I think that was. I yeah. said something publicly, and they said, "What can Elon do?" I said, "Seek therapy." I think I said, "You know." Um, it was. It and might I, have been a joke, but it was good advice. Actually, he should seek you therapy. You know. You know, and I think probably he probably read that. Um, um, but my I question, just really quick on that, just to follow up. So I think the big think thing about Elon is like this, is is it in, is it related to Twitter, right? Does Is there something about the Twitter platform that breaks people's brains? Because he's not alone on this. and or no. is, Or was this underlying, and you have this hilarious Harambe story in the book where like mm -hmm. you, you, you introduce Salzburger to him, like, and you knew him personally. So like, you know, was the, this craziness always underneath and something triggered yes. him or was it something about the app? Like, well, how do you assess? Well, you know, he's always been a troubled person and he doesn't hide it. Like if you go back and look at some New York Times stories, he's sort of very emotional around when Tesla was in big trouble. Um, you know, he's always, and he's talked about it uh, compared to a lot of people. He talks about his mental health struggles. He has several times. He said, he said he's manic depressive. I think at one point, um, he doesn't hide his unhappiness and he never was. And that made him unlike people because a lot of them feel robotic and, and Elon always felt emotional all the time. You know, you could see, uh, you know, or I ran into him at a party once and I go, how's it going? He goes, I'm really lonely. And I was like, Oh, okay. TMI. Nine children. Okay. Yeah, I know. I was like, Oh, I, I didn't know what to say. I was like, Oh, well, okay. All right, then I'll get a drink over here. I don't, what did you say? That was, it was <laughs> Maybe so if you like, had hugged him. Maybe if you'd hugged him in that oh, moment, we no, wouldn't be no, here right you. now, Kara. No, thank you. <laughs> um, no, um, you know, he did, wasn't dating someone, I think, or I was, it was weird. It was weird. I remember being, a, I felt bad for him. Um, and, and I think he has long mental health struggles. I think as you saw in the wall street journal, he ha he, he enjoys medicating himself with a variety of drugs, um, self-medicating. Um, and I think that story was very important, um, to write because it links to some of the behavior. I think COVID was a real moment for him that he, it, you know, a lot of people got radicalized during COVID, the vaccine stuff. Um, he, he, for some reason, he got pulled into that whole anti-vax kind of thing um, uh, or, or questioning the vax. And then he got into Invermectin. And we had an interview during that period where he just went off the rails and he had never done that. I have to say in an interview for sure where he threatened to leave the interview because I doubted his intelligence on COVID. And I was yeah. like, I just don't think you know what you're talking about. And that offended him greatly. And you know, he didn't leave the interview, of course, because was he's such a paper tiger in that regard. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think it built. And there was always an element of these dank memes, boob and penis jokes, ha-ha, boobs, you know. And I remember thinking when he did it a couple of times, God, this guy is in his 40s. What yeah. is he doing? This is kind of sad. Like how yeah. sad, like kind of thing. But it was a, a minor Maybe part the of his personality. Maybe prefrontal cortex development. Yeah, I was like, oh, whatever. It's so juvenile, but okay. But I think Twitter did help do that. I think it was a combination of COVID. I think he's got, as he got richer, you know, all these people, it happens in politics too, and they're not even rich. They have people around them licking them up and down all day. They think yeah. they own the world. They're so hypocritical. Like you saw that Hunter Biden thing with Matt Gates, where he goes- yeah. You know, what did you take drugs? He's like, you're not the person to be talking to me about that. But, but that's how arrogant Matt Gates is. He's, yeah. you know, come on, Matt Gates. We know you're a partier. It's ridiculous. Um, and to be so high handed about drug use. Um, uh, by the way, I don't find any, whatever, take whatever drugs you want. Um, but I think he changed. He got Maybe radicalized. Stay away from needles, kids. 
Needles, needles, needles kids. Stay yeah. away from needles. Um, yes. I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. So um, he he changed. He he became radicalized. And I think, I know it sounds crazy, but the one thing that I remember him getting so upset about in one of the interviews was Biden did not invite him to a car confab, electric car confab. He had all the big right. ones. And I got to say, he is the pioneer of that, right? He was the pioneer of that. Um, and he wasn't invited and he was so mad not to be invited. He was like a little much. I deserve to be there. I like, uh, and that, that's where he turned on Biden. And I remember calling someone from the Biden administration. I was like, you should have invited him. They're like, we, you know, they didn't because of the union issues. That was what was the problem there. Cause they, it's not a unionized shop. Tesla isn't. And he, he was furious about that. It was fascinating to me. I'm like, what do you care? And he was like, I deserve to be there. I just, he's so, so to sum it up, I think he's become more radicalized. I think he's changed. And he thinks because he's so rich, he thinks he's untouchable. And it, who does that remind you of? Who has changed also, by the way? Trump was not I, this way are you all sure? the time. I mean, he was a little bit, but was it was bit. harmless. It was harmless and silly and performative Yeah. when he was on that show. A lot of it was tongue in cheek. You know what I mean? And that, then it, he became the character he was playing on TV and it, it, it fed into the way he was. And by the way, now that we see all the sexual assault stuff over the years, it's like, oh, yes, no, he was always like this. Um, yeah. But he I, hit it well, I guess. I see he a hit little it bit well. of a different parallel that is kind of similar, though. When you talk about these rich guy resentment, that's hard for me mm -hmm. to get. Um, and right. one thing I was just I was dying to ask you about is uh, the uh, Andreessen Manifesto. Oh. Mark Andreessen oh. is, is uh, one of these yes. people don't know. Big venture capitalist, also a brilliant guy, started Netscape. And um, he, he, had a, he had a manifesto about tech optimism. I'm interested in your take on, and uh, I just want to read one bit for it. Uh, our enemy sure. is the ivory tower, the know-it-all credentialed expert worldview, indulging in abstract theories, luxury beliefs, social engineering, disconnected for the real world, delusional, unelected, and unaccountable, playing God with everyone else's lives with total insulation from the consequences. I, I have two questions about this. One, why are the richest people in the world so resentful of people in the supposed ivory tower? And do they, why do they not realize he's talking about himself here? He's very talking confused. about himself. He's a very, he's always been a very troubled person. I don't know what else to say. He's, he's a very difficult, complex person. And uh, in, when I knew him, I used to talk to him almost nightly, which was interesting. Um, really? Uh, like he yeah, called you? We used to text him a lot. No, we text, 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 text. Yeah. Um, uh, we talk about politics or text about you know, different things. He's very <laughs> gossipy. He was a very gossipy personality. He was, um, I'm sure he still is. Um, uh, he, that's about him. That is about him. He, these people in Silicon Valley, it's, it's a miracle. They have mirror, mirror, they, that they can see themselves in mirrors there. You know what I mean? It's a miracle. They're like vampires. They can't see themselves. And so Why? You hold, what is it about? What is well, it's again, about? a combination of mental challenges of extreme wealth, um, godlike tendencies. They all think they're in a video game in which they're ready player one. Um, they yeah. think they know better because they know about one thing. They know about, oh, I'm going to tell you about Ukraine or whatever. And they haven't, but they have, by the way, one of the good things about tech is a natural questioning of the status quo. That's a good thing. Like, sure. why are we doing it like this? But instead of why are we doing it like this, th their now thing is what they're doing is bad and we must kill it. Like it's changed from let's try a new way to Let's kill them because they're hurting us. And so every, they see everything as, as an, they, they're contrary for contrary sake, which is ridiculous. And it's, it's infected people in the media too. Yeah. You know, it really badly, some people. Um, they, they, they like think a, this, every, every, everybody, like there's a whole bunch, there's a whole strain of, you know, Matt Tybee, those people yeah, who yeah. are like lap dogs to Elon Musk and then he kicked them, which was yeah. a surprise. You know, they kick, kick, kicked all of them. He's yeah. kicked everybody in that Twitter files thing. He's kicked them all. It's yeah. fantastic. I knew it would happen, you know. That but, was kind uh, of satisfying. It was sad. It was sad, actually, for them. Uh, but you knew where that was going. Um, but they, um, you know, they really feel like they're victims. They always feel like they're – one of the things that I used to get, because I was considered, although mm, many men think I'm not tough enough, too bad. Mama's not mean enough, too bad. Um, uh, they they used to call me mean. Like, they'd always – they would call me – Right. Uh, these these tech moguls, when I'd write something and they're like, 
you're mean to me. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Your co- company collapsed. I said it collapsed. Like, mm-hmm. they're like, yeah, that's real mean. And I was like, again, I would always be like, I'm not your fucking mama. I don't know what your problem is. We're not friends. This is not, I'm not trying to get you. It's just facts. Your company collapsed. Um, and they would be, I would get that a lot. You're not nice to me or you're my, I thought we were, there was that scene in the book with the Google guys where I called them, I, I said, I was writing a story about them trying to take over search. And this was early 2000s at some point, yeah. 2008 maybe. And they, um, I wrote this thing in Dr. Seuss were saying they could, would not, could not have a monopoly or something like that. I right. made it rhyme. Um, and then I said, I had covered the Microsoft trial where they were the antitrust trial many years before in the nineties. And I said, they, at least Microsoft knew they were thugs. These people pretend they're not, you know, they, they have yes. their giant colorful balls and their pogo sticks and their soft food, but they're the same. It's the same killer. So they were, they called me all hurt. They're like, that really hurt us calling us thugs. And I was like, well, I think you're thugs. I don't know what to tell you. And, and they said, we're not bad people. And, you know, they referenced their don't be evil, you know, thing. And I said, you know what, guys, I don't think you're evil. I really don't actually. I said, I'm worried about what you're building. The next person is going to be evil and they're coming, you know, they're coming. Evil is coming for this. These tools are so powerful. They're so pervasive. They can amplify really bad things. What you're building is dangerous. Even if you aren't bad, the next guy is sure to be bad or he's coming. The bad guy's coming. And they never got that. They never understood that they never understood history or anything else. And that was very troubling to me about these people. And they would always say, you're mean. And I'm like, I'm not mean. I'm just, I'll tell you one other example is I wrote a column in the New York Times in 2019, in which I said, if Trump loses the election, this is my hypothetical. If Trump loses the election, he's going to start saying it was stolen. He's going to say it was a lie. He's going to perpetrate it up and down the online ecosystem. It's going to have resonance because it's going to go up and down and up and down. And it's going to, it's going to radicalize people. And then He's going to ask people to do something about it in the real world. It's going to jump off online into offline. And we are fucked if he does that. Like this is going to get violent because yeah. he had already started with violent phrases on Twitter before that. Oh, and I said, I think it was 16. He was doing it in twenty. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And so I, 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 I put this scenario out, right. Which is happened. Right. Yeah, and right. I said, this is, the, this is the most likely scenario based on what I've seen this guy do. I got calls from every one of those social media sites saying, how dare you say this? This is, this will never happen. I'm like, this will happen. This is exactly where this is headed. And they were mad at me for saying so. And, you know, I, I, and I said, I think at this moment, you are quickly becoming handmaidens to sedition. That's what you're doing. And they got mad at me. So they never could see the they just don't have any sense of history. Is this is, yeah, let's do the Trump thing because JVL yeah. in our in the newsletter yesterday for the triad wrote uh, created JVL's mm-hmm. law, which I really liked, which is relevant to this. Mm-hmm. It says any person or institution not explicitly anti-Trump will become a tool for Trump's authoritarianism eventually. Mm-hmm. And that, this was mm-hmm. true of all. And he was talking about the courts and Mitch McConnell, yeah, sure. but this is true about That's the tech. Absolutely true. It's, it's true of the tech companies too. And I just, I mm-hmm. you know, all of these guys. You write about this in the book about how you know Trump wins and then. They mm-hmm. all go to try to to try to work him over, to try to meet with him, to try right. to be on the inside. And mm-hmm. that even includes the White Hat guys. Tim Cook is out yes, there, you there. know, trying mm-hmm. to work Trump over, and they're putting out pr- mm-hmm. press releases together about about manufacturing mm-hmm. or whatever. I, I, so, mm-hmm. talk about that, how that, that was happening in real time, and and what you write about in the book about these guys accommodating Trump and and the dangers of that. Well, you know, I was, I was, I was, a, hadn't been a beat reporter for a while, but I got the tip that they were all going, which was a shock to me because nobody said anything. And you know, these people are so performative. Everything they do requires a press release or a tweet or whatever. But suddenly it was silent because they were embarrassed. They, it, they had, they had trashed Trump to me off the record a million times, right? Like, oh, what a clown, what a buffoon. A buffoon was the common word and he can't win. And, He's an idiot. We can work with Hillary. You know, that's what they thought was going to happen. And, and some of them were more explicit. Sheryl Sandberg was a big supporter who was at, at, at Facebook, was a big supporter of Hillary Clinton. Meg Whitman had famously shifted. Now, by the way, she didn't go to the meeting. She right. said he's a he's a despot is what she said. She was a Republican. She the was never, like the only the Republican. The Trumpers always had the most. The, the never Trumpers did the mm-hmm. right thing. We were the ones. We see it clearly. Yeah, Meg, Meg is a fellow it, traveler. Like, 
Yeah, she yeah. was. And she was very, for her to shift like that was really quite yeah. something to watch. Um, and because she was, she's conser- conservative, but she, you know, she's a typical Republican. And being a Republican yeah, in Silicon school. Valley in California, right there was, she was, she was a unicorn. There's a couple yeah. and John Chambers, I think was one. Uh, there's a couple, but not many. Um, and there certainly were no Trumpers. There were no Trumpers. Right. And so when they, I heard about this, I was literally with my son at a, at a farmer's market and I'm like, they're going where? All of them? What? And then I started to see who was going. And I was like, it's all of them going. And so I said, surely they're going to say something publicly about his comments on immigration because immigration built Silicon Valley. Surely they can't go to this meeting without making a statement about immigration. And I got on the phone with all of them, including Elon. And he was the one who, who actually was like, listen, I don't think he's going to do this Muslim ban. I'm going to stop him, blah, 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 blah. Like, I'm Jesus kind of thing. And and I said, you're not going to stop him. He said he's going to do it. This guy, for all his ridiculous clownishness, I think he's going to do it. Like, he said so. He promised his people. He's This is not a hard thing to do, like the wall or whatever, but he said it. And he's and I had counted it up and I was like, he said it 712 times on the campaign trail. He's going to, he doesn't let, he's right. a racist. He's a longtime racist. This guy is persistently been attacking people of color. So I feel like he's going to do it and different people. And, and it's his, I don't know. Anyway, I talked to all of them. They thought he wasn't going to do it. And they're like, we'll talk to him off the record. And I'm like, no, you, you're the powerful people. You're the ones who stand up for immigration yeah. because it's helped build your industry. And none of them did. And it was really something to see. And then they skulked out. They never made a statement. And Trump used the entire thing as a press release. Yes. Trump was smart enough to use it. Multiple and he did times he used all them for press releases. They love me. They love me. I put them on my council. They're on my side. The smart guys are on my side. So Tim they were Apple's used- bringing the jobs yeah. back to America back. from China, right. the whole thing. Which he wasn't. But right. okay, he, you know. And he got it wrong in lots of ways. But, you know, when he got it wrong, they didn't correct him either, right. by the way. <laughs> um <laughs> Which was fine. I got that. You know, someone from Apple was like, what are we going to do? Say the president's an idiot. I said that we could start Maybe. there. Yeah. Um, but they can't. I got that one. I got that. He, he's a polite man. He's not going to call him out right there. But all of them were happy to call me and insult him. But none of them were happy to do it on the record, which I thought was really nefarious. I just was like, you're kidding me. Like, and because they Welcome wanted to their, my life, their, Kara. Yeah. But then they, I know they, they wanted their money back. They wanted that there was all this income and they wanted the money repatriated. It hadn't been repatriated, this right. cash that they wanted. They wanted tax breaks and they wanted um, no regulation. And so that's what they got. That's what they got. Um I want to do uh, another area where you were warning and uh, mm-hmm. and how it ties to now, which is media stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you, mm-hmm. you, you warned all these companies, the Murdochs. Uh, you told Don Cram uh, in the book that this would wipe out his classified business. He laughed and said, ouch. Um, mm-hmm. ooh, guess he was wrong on that one. Uh, and so mm-hmm. uh, you can talk about that if you want. But I'm also I'm more curious about where your warnings would be now to these media mm-hmm. companies with with particularly with regards to the AI and how mm-hmm. things are going to get even worse, frankly, or more complicated, yeah, I, at least, maybe not. I, you know, this when we have these technological upheavals, there's one in farming a long time ago. You know, most people used to, a third of people used to be farmers. Now it's so tiny, the, the population of people who do farming. Um, same thing with me, uh, manufacturing, mechanization, and, and um uh, robots and things like that. That's changed that that completely. Now it's coming for the white collar. Th- this this AI stuff is for white collar, really. And it's going to decimate certain industries and it's going to really change the way we work. And media is one of those places. I don't think decimation, but I do think we've already had the shit kicked out of us in terms of online advertising, which is now dominated by two tech companies, which is Google and, and Facebook or Meta and Alphabet. Um, and so they have taken up all, they have sucked up all the digital advertising for the most part. And then some companies do okay, like the New York Times and some others. So that, so the economic stuffing is knocked out of it to start with. And now these tools will make it so every single company that has information will be able to be much more efficient and cut costs. And where do you think the costs are? People. That's where most costs are. And so anything, you know, one of the lines I have in the book is anything that can be digitized will be digitized. Now it's not just digitized, but it's smart digitization. Like it'll take, right. it'll do head, like in media, it'll do all kinds of things. Now it's not going to write stories or report them. That is, that is not true, but it can collate and collect information in a way that people used to do that. We don't need people to do that anymore. And that's the danger is there's all these jobs where people are doing things that are easily done by computers. And these are super, these are super computers. I'm using a technical term here. It's not yeah. a technical term. They're just better computers, yeah. better I, at doing I, that. 
I wonder. I worry a little less about the jobs I worry about it than I do about the consumers. Um, I, I had, you know, your co-host Scott Galloway. He's kind of AI optimist-ish with caveats, mm-hmm. you know, smart he about is. it. But and so when I was pushing him back on this, the one mm-hmm. area where we kind of both were like, "Yeah, this one's tough." Is, yeah. you know, if, if I said to him, I was like, "If I sometimes get confused, not that often, but every once in a while, I get tricked by something yeah. online." If I yeah. and I am a, we just talked. I'm an addict. I'm a like I, I consume more information than anyone. So if I'm getting con- cons- if I'm getting tricked. What is, mm-hmm. what is my aunt going to do? What's my, you know what I mean? What are people that well, didn't go to college going to do with AI? I, can, I, I, don't, I don't think we have anybody's even trying to come up with an answer to this. Well, I think it's going to not affect, you know, blue collar workers as much at all. I mean, some of it is. I mean, people are worried about, say, uh, autonomous vehicles. I think there's not enough truck drivers. And I think a lot of truck driving should be done. It's a dangerous job. And so it could change that industry for in a good way, actually. You could see it. But I, it's very hard. I think you, one of the problems with tech is that it's addictive, but it's also necessary. You can't do your job in a white collar situation without digitization. You just can't. And so it's unavoidable. It's unavoidable and addictive, and it knocks the stuffing out of the economics of most businesses. That's really scary. But what about the Hollywood's misinformation it. side of it, though? What about people getting well, confused, people not knowing what's real and what's fake? Well, it started with cable, like with Fox News, which is very effective, but now yeah. it's at scale, right? Now it's at scale. So people, if people are getting all their news from Facebook, what Facebook picks to put in front of them is important. The problem is the people at Facebook don't care what they put in front of people. It, it, you know, Nazis or cat videos, it's all the same to them, right, kind yeah. of thing. And so, and then it also, it gives you what you want. So if you start down one road, you get to the other road, right? And so it's a, it's a, it's a path of radicalization that happens. It used to be called propaganda, but now it's propaganda at scale and it, that you do it yourself propaganda. They don't have to put up a poster you know, in Berlin in the 30s of uh, uh, depicting Jewish people as vermin, for example. They don't have to do that. You know what they can do? They can send an individual message to one person. They know their fears. They know their what they like. They know their fears, what they like. They know their habits. They can send messaging that is so designed at them that it's dangerous. It, it really, it, it, they, it's designer propaganda is what it is it, it, and, and very much aimed at individual people. You know, I've talked about my mom just being total, you know, just complete. And, and that's just Fox news during COVID. She's like, it's just the flu that went on yeah. for a while. Um, I did one time, which was incredible. I did an interview with Hillary Clinton and my mom called me and she goes, oh, that Hillary Clinton. She's saying this, this is this about people like me. People like me is their favorite phrase, yeah. right? They're trying to get us, people like me. And I said, oh, that sounds vaguely familiar. And I said, can you just tell me more about it? And she started to say, and it was my interview she was quoting, except it was through the lens of right-wing media, right? Right. Which wasn't accurate at all. They had twisted it. And I said, mom, that's not what you said. Oh, she's like, no, that's what she said. And I go, "Mm, it's your daughter and it was my interview. (laughs) It's not what she said. I made her go listen to it and she did. And, um, and she came back. She's like, okay, that's not what she said, but she's still, you know, plotting against our country and really secretly running it. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah. Like it didn't matter. So that's um, propaganda. That's, and it's very good. It's propaganda on speed is what it is. I, the, my just hope level for uh, our politicians' ability to mm-hmm. actually regulate this in a way mm-hmm. is just is basically nil. I know that Mark Andreessen's worried that he's being overregulated. But I, I don't. I, they seem completely unable to do anything. Our our mutual friend Luther Lowe, he texted me and I was like, "What should I ask Carrie?" He said, "They can't. These guys can't even." you know, end the self-preferencing thing that he's obsessed yeah. with, right? Which is that like Google is, you know, is putting mm-hmm. its own its own products at the top of Google search instead of having it be actual democracy. So if, if, if government, if Chuck Schumer, if these guys can't regulate just the basic stuff about privacy, about, mm-hmm. um, you know, self-preference, how, how in God's name are they going to handle the AI, the AI side of this? And there's like, what is the optimistic... There, there, there isn't. The, there isn't because this is so private. It's all private, right? That's the issue is that not just not just AI, but space is private. Everything that's important that government used to have a hand in is private. AI is run by big companies. It's not run by our government. It's not. Our government doesn't have a handle on it. This is something our government, because of national security issues, because of all kinds of things, should be deep into. And they just aren't. Um, in the way they used to be, at least. Um, and so now decisions are being made by big companies. I'm not sure what could happen. And also, there's a ton of money at stake. Like Sam Altman is raising $7 trillion 
for a chip factory. Uh, Microsoft is a multi-trillion dollar company. NVIDIA, which makes chips, trillion, multi, a multi-trillion dollar company. Apple, a multi-trillion dollar company. Yeah. You know, they're and all- these guys making 180 grand a year uh, right. in, in D.C. in charge with trying to, you know, put some right. bumpers on this. And there's just and they no hope. Can't, but they haven't. They ha- they've had the chance for three decades now, and they haven't. And, you know, one of the things is, um, I was at an event last night and Amy Klobuchar has tried her hardest to get even a basic antitrust bill through, you know, and she got kneecapped by the tech companies who were spending in districts, including by Democrats, FYI, who just pulled away from the, her bills because they got kneecapped in the, you know, in their own districts or whatever. Um, they, they, these co- companies have enormous lobbying organizations now that that really can move the needle here. And it's like standard oil got it together before we could break it up, right? They got it together. And so, yeah, and there's See, so me, many of them. There's this so is my many. free market, my old free market coming mm-hmm. through. I don't, I think that the regulatory side of this is more important than the competition side, right? I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I, to me, I, I always think that the obsession with the antitrust is a little overstated. I, I like, because I'm except, with the exception of example. Google, with the exception of right. Google, right? Because yeah, right. Because some of these we see now, I mean, even Google now, chat, like there are other companies that are disrupting it. Uh, you know, people's like Facebook's a monopoly. Except, I'm like, really? There are 19 that, social media except, companies. All right. I'm going to push back on that because okay. I am also a capitalist myself. Right, I built lots of businesses, but in that time, they got to dominate digital advertising. See, in that time that fit, that Amazon didn't have to pay sales taxes when other retailers did, they yeah. got to dominate. So they get to dominate and build a great business off the backs and they don't pay the cost. Facebook got to dominate and didn't pay the price for propaganda, the anti-Semitism. Guess who's? It's like they're opiate makers. And we're saying- Thank you. And you don't have to pay the price of your damage that it's, it's, you know, pharmaceutical companies don't get to do it. Don't get, they definitely break laws, but they, there's laws to break. There are zero laws in place. I mean, it, there should be more than one, right? Sure. There just should be. And there aren't any. There's and I, antitrust is just one of them. We, I just think we need to update our antitrust laws. It's a hundred yeah, years fair. now. Companies have shifted and it should be done smartly. I think we've got to update our algorithm. What is in those algorithms? What, how do they make decisions? Let's talk about safety. These are just basic yeah. things that do, don't hinder capitalism. Privacy. Why should they take, why are they scraping your content and mine? Like at least we have copyright laws that are good. Um, so should they be able to just shoplift your shit, Tim? No. Yeah. I mean, why? Why? And and it, and you have to sue them to yeah. get it back. I want a penny. Like, give, give me that Spotify. I, I, that's cash. right. I want that, I point zero zero I, one I'm pennies for you, every time they I, use my I tweets. I said the same. You know, AOL was doing it at one point. They're like, we make fifty dollars from every user. I'm like, where's my vig? Because <laughs> yeah. it's my information. I'm paths are made by walking. It's a very famous quote. Yeah. There, that's my walking. I want to be paid for my my. You know, they they scrape everybody's information and We're then down they count the themselves. Mines. You know, right. And then, it. and then they say, you're welcome. And also say, oh, you know, cause it's capitalism. I'm like, is this capitalism? No, it's the really top people get to use their positions to, to help them in other ways. I don't think that's competition. I don't think, I think we're not going to have enough. The way America wins is through innovation at the lower level. And if every, if all AI is dominated by big companies, do you think there's going to be a lot of little companies? which are the lifeblood of this country in terms of innovation. You know, I like these big companies, good for them, but they will not, we need little companies growing almost constantly to one, be innovative and two, to keep up in terms of things. And that's, what's going to get killed here is real capitalism, which is what I am for. Not, you know, because so. Uh, Okay. We're we're about out of time. A couple rapid fires. I've got, I've got my happy person, my happy character for the book. I did not know this about you. But you're kind mm-hmm. of responsible for America's best governor, Jared Polis. Uh, uh, I am. You know, because you told like his mother to cash out on their digital mm-hmm. <laughs> digital greeding card company. I did. <laughs> Give us one yeah, sentence yeah. on that. Oh, Jared. He was such a, he was like, you know that Michael J. Fox show where he was the conservative and his parents were hippies? Oh, yeah. That Alex was P. That, Keaton. Yeah. Alex P. He was Alex P. Keaton. A gay one, but he was Alex P. Keaton. And so. Yeah, same. Maybe uh, this is why. Yeah, maybe this is why yeah so it was alive. really funny. Yeah, that was interesting. It was called Blue Mountain Arts. And they were, it was, it, at the time they were buying traffic. Everybody was trying to buy traffic. And so they sold their company. It was a greeting card company. And he was, he was doing candies and flowers. He was so funny. He was a funny guy. You got no big on that either. But you talked about no, to no, his they used mom. to send me. Time to sell. They used to send me cards. I was like, I don't want your cards, real cards and stuff like that. I'd like uh, cash on the barrel. 
on the other no, side of the equation, are the worst people in the world the friends of the actual genius entrepreneurs who get rich off RSUs like David Balsacks? Are those the worst no. characters in the book? <laughs> Um, he's not in the book. He's just on the back of the book. <laughs> I ignored him completely. I don't, I'm not That's interested in talking. I'm not interested in talking about enablers and minions. I'm not, that, they don't interest me. Suck they us. only interest me because they're real. I do think in some ways I kind of, I, at least I do, I, I dislike Elon and Teal and these people, but at least they were innovators. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? The the the, yes. the kind of people that are riding on their backs, the ones that bug me. Okay, uh, this is a request from a listener. Mm -hmm. You can you can reject it if you want, and we're going to PG it up a little bit. Kiss, no marry, problem. disappear. Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Sam yeah. Altman. Wait, kiss, marry, marry, disappear. That's okay. That's Sam, Elon, Sam, Elon, Elon, Mark Zuckerberg. Ugh. It's tough. Dis disappear, Elon. Go to Mars. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Would be great. It's, we've had enough of you, and take Bill Ackman with you. Um, um, I probably would marry uh, Sam Altman oh. because it would be a beautiful gay marriage together with us. Um, uh, um, I guess I'd have to kiss Mark. He's, he's actually he's a nice fella. I, like I could. I'm not going to kiss Mark. <laughs> he's got his muscles now, though. He's been working out. He does. Out, so. He was so skinny. So was Jeff Bezos. He was skinny, skinny. They're both skinny little things. Speaking so. of the gays, I think the, the most lesbian clause ever written is in this book. The hardware store is my safe space. Okay. My final question. I asked you, you could tell one story that, you, that was in the book. Uh, I want to hear the ice sculpture story. Okay. Okay. So at what, what, the, during this period of craziness, when everyone was adorable, um, the, my wife worked for Google many years after I'd started covering them, but she went there. I stopped covering them when she went there. Um, she, um, we went to this baby shower for Ann Wojcicki and Sergey Brin. They've since divorced, but they, they were having their baby and you walked in and there were all these baby photos. And when you walked in, they always have these assistants. They are, they're full of assistants, these people. And, and they all have swingy blonde hair, all of them, women, they're all women. And they said, would you like you a one swingy blonde hair? No, as you can see, I do not. Um, I, it's just Kara and me and my Eeyore back there. Um, I had, uh, they said, would you like a onesie or a diaper? And I was like, what? And so they made, they love dressing up. These people like forced fun. I used to call it forced joy. Mm -hmm. um, so they made you put on a diaper or onesie and then gave you a sucker and a baby hat and a bottle of a fake baby bottle to put liquor in. And I said, I'm not putting any of this on. There's no fucking way, you know, I'm putting any of this stuff on. And a rattle, there was a rattle involved. And 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 so I ran inside before they could make me do it. And they like chased me. And I was like, I'm not putting on this shit. And I walked inside and it was like, it was a dystopian version of people pretending they were babies. And there was a bounce house. There was baby food, everything in little baby food jars. All the food was in baby jars. People were, wrote, Sergey was in a onesie on roller skates. There was all kinds of bouncy balls. It was just like, it was a nightmare. And I had toddlers. And so I was like, this is bullshit. Like, this is really weird. Um, and I was, um, you know, I was like, I don't need this. I have it at home. I don't need this stuff. And I didn't like, I did, they'd always tried to get you to act like a child, which I hated. They had slides in their There's offices. metaphor there, I like, think. Yeah. Like we're childish, uh, childlike. And I was like, you're childish. That's yeah. for sure. And so there was an ice sculpture there too, which I was riveted to It's a full, it's a torso of a woman. And out of the breasts came white Russians that you put your cup up like and they, to the boob, like it was breastfeeding. It was so ridiculous. And I look over and right near the breastfeeding is uh, Gavin Newsom, who was mayor of San Francisco at the time. And he's in one of his fantastic suits. That guy can dress, right? And I, he didn't have a diaper on. And I was like, how did you, he's like, how did you get out of it? I said, I ran, I wasn't going to do a dignity. And he's, I, I said, how did you get out of it? He said, I knew you'd be here and you would take my picture and that would be the end of my political career in a <laughs> diaper at the behest of billionaires. And we were laughing hysterically because it was so, I, calling to fact check this with him was so funny. We were laughing the hard, we, he was like, oh my God. Like, this was not a hallucination, right? This really happened. And then we I just had need you to white Russian. No, and then we'd had some of the white Russian. It was delicious. Um, so I love that. It was just so, it was everything wrong and right with that time of period. It was so ri fucking ridiculous. But at the same time, it was kind of sweet. It was weird and sweet and strange and also 
what is wrong with these people. Also and therapy so, inducing. Yeah, it takes therapy. a full circle. Kara Swisher, yeah. host of the podcast, Thank on you. with Kara Swisher and Pivot. She's got a new book, Burn Book. Go get it. Thank you so much for taking Thank the time. Thank you. With and us. just remember, I never wore a diaper and neither did Gavin Newsom. So vote for him for president. We didn't we, <laughs> no, we resisted noted. the diaper. We resisted the diaper. It's a low Thank president you. bar these days, but well, you know, we're gonna take listen. it. Listen. Listen, that's the way we are. That's where we are right now. Thank you so much, Tim. I love your podcast. I love your work. But I would get off the internet a little bit for you. I have to say, you're very present. Thank you. That's a good advice. <laughs> I appreciate that. My husband agrees. We'll talk to you later, I, Kara. 